Hello, it is Friday, April 22nd, 2022. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. It's a Friday puzzle, so our first themeless puzzle of the week, and possibly a bit trickier than what we've been solving this week. Um, and this edition of the Daily Solve has been brought to us by David Connell, Victoria Rojishka, and, as always, the inestimable hood monster and the invaluable Timothy Mark. So thank you so much to the four of them, Patreons, of, well, their benefactors, specifically of the Daily Solve Patreon campaign. Um, and all pa- <laughs> all patrons um, are very much appreciated for their direct support helping make this channel sustainable. I do very much appreciate it. And if you'd like to join their ranks and at any of those levels of patronage, you get access to all of the um, bonus videos that have gone up. You can find that at patreon.com slash daily solve. And if you join at the benefactor level, like our four esteemed benefactors at the beginning there, um, you also get the Let's Check the Crosses Daily Solve mug, as well as that um, recognition. And uh, finally, you can also join the Daily Solve Discord chat server, the Daily Solve community. And uh, it's free for anybody to join. And you can solve community-created puzzles in there in the Constructor's Corner channel. You can chat about the Daily New York Times puzzle. You can post your Wordle scores. And then if you back the Patreon campaign at any level, you also get an extra channel in there. And, um, well, I said finally, but one more thing. Do subscribe to the subscribe to the YouTube channel if, you, uh, if you'd like to. Thank you to everybody who has done so. It's nice seeing that number tick up. All right, so let's get on to Friday's puzzle, shall we? Like I said, it's a themeless puzzle. It was constructed by Daniel Sharametta. This is Daniel's first puzzle, a debut construction for Friday. And it was edited, as always, by Will Shorts. So let's get going. Wow, a very airy grid, very open grid. Some long, some long words, to long words or phrases that we'll have to place. All right, so a cheap trick, perhaps don't know. The perhaps gives that some latitude. So this could be an example of a cheap trick. It could be something that doesn't strictly mean cheap trick, but could be interpreted as such. What an aphrodisiac boost. Boosts your libido, supposedly. And does that help with cheap trick, perhaps? I don't think so. Apply pressure to. Lean on, maybe? You could say you lean on somebody metaphorically to apply pressure to them. Let's check the crosses and see. Holds up. Lasts? You could say that really holds up. That really lasts. Not completely confident, but let's keep looking. Greek counterpart of discordia. Um, Is it Eros? Recherche. So if something is recherche, it's sort of not done or it's inappropriate or it's too much. Um, Probably not the best definition. Um, Let's see, what else do we have here? C18 down, high school alternative to the 11 down. Oh, I bet this is, um, I sort of remember this. This is the uh, ACT. It's some kind of standardized, I know, I guess research Sorry, I'll come back back to that in a second. High school alternative to ACT. Is it... So the ACT is a standardized achievement test that's sometimes used for university admissions in the United States. Is it the PSAT? I would have assumed the counterpart to the ACT would have been the regular SAT, the standardized achievement test or whatever it is. I know that the (laughs) letters have changed over time. Um... Not sure. Maybe I'll leave that blank for now. So recherche. So, sorry, I think it's less that it's sort of not done and more that it's something, un- well, un- not done, but not in the sense of it being taboo necessarily. It's more that it's kind of obscure or out there or unusual. It's recherche. Yeah, it's like, boy, that's 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 a strange one. Um, So what would that be? And then perfect could be, now perfect is in quotation marks here. So this is presumably going to be something we say. It's not going to be necessarily something that just means perfect. I mean, it it probably will be, but it will be something you would exclaim. And then dealing directly with, I'm not sure about, the problem is I'm not sure about any of these really. (laughs) 
Maybe I should keep looking around. Food, water, a place to live, etc. Is this the bare necessities? Wow! What a funny coincidence. Um, this was referenced in another crossword I solved recently, the listener crossword, which is a, um, a brutally difficult <laughs> uh, themed cryptic crossword that's published every week in the Times, not the New York Times, but the Times here in the UK, the Times of London, as it's sometimes called outside of the UK. Um, what a funny coincidence. And it was, it was actually a very, a very important answer. It was this, it was this week's puzzle. Um, but anyway, in that case, it was the bare necessities as in the song from the jungle book, not, uh, so the, the pun on bare necessities. So B E A R, but what a funny thing. Anyway, uh, is it Eris, not Eris, Greek counterpoint of discordia. So recherche, arcane, there we go. It's arcane, it's obscure. It's, um, I don't know, unusual. Perfect, nailed it. Okay, this is all coming together. Thank you to the Bare Necessities for helping me confirm some of these crosses and move forward. Deal if you're dealing directly with something, you're one-on-one -on -one with it or that person. Drawing method, lot. You could draw, draw lots to randomly select a person, for instance. They're saved for a rainy day. Nest eggs, I suppose, is some money you're saving up. And part of a pool, you could have a gene pool, new genetic material. And turn could be take a turn in a game, take a go, but need more letters than that. What's up, my dude? Yo dog, I guess, or hi dog? Yo dog seems more likely. Uh, turn. Why do I not see what that is? And what about this? Historically Germanic observances. I'm not sure what that's implying. I'm sorry. What about this? Winter slopes activity. Skiing? Oh, so maybe this isn't yo dog. And maybe this isn't skiing. Uh, winter slopes activity. Hiking? I mean, skiing seems more likely. So if it were skiing, turn expands. Inflates? No, that doesn't fit. Let's look elsewhere for, for the time being. We can use all these bare necessities crosses. I sort of forgot about those. Eastern lodging. North Atlantic island group. Um, this could be some, I was going to say islands in Scotland, but actually it's probably the Faroe Islands, which are um, also in the North Atlantic. So does that work here? Cheap trick, perhaps. Mm. And regulation followers, for short. Regulation. Blank I do, informal assent. Feels as though maybe I have something wrong here. Decreases. Oh no, maybe, maybe this is working. So decreases has a question mark here, which means it's punny. There's some kind of wordplay going on. So... It means we're not going to use this to mean declines, decreases. We're going to use it to mean something else. So what else could this mean? It could mean remove the creases from something, uh, to iron clothing, to press clothing. So decreases, irons, I think is what that is in a punny sense. And Eastern lodging. What is that? That's going to be annoying when I get it, and I'm <laughs> going to be irritated that I didn't get it earlier. Cheap trick. Um, okay, yeah, I already looked at all those. Tweak and sweeties could be... Huns, if you're referring to a pet name for a partner uh, or something like that. Cheap trick. What is this? Oh, a life hack. Is that what this is? I see. So the, what the perhaps is doing, it's making it, I think what that's doing is it's broadening it from cheap trick, meaning a dirty trick, and cheap is turning into something inexpensive. So in sort of modern online jargon, a life hack is sort of an, maybe an inexpensive technique you can apply to improve your life in some way in some or, or make something more convenient. So I think that's what that's getting at probably. Does that help here? Tweak. Oh, amend as in a text. And amend is the emend with an E. <laughs> amend is the slightly less common sibling of amend with an A. And 
They're very similar. They mean essentially the same thing, but amend with an E can only be used to refer to text. Pretty sure. Stupid me. I am a moron. There we go. That's how I feel sometimes solving the New York Times crossword. Eastern, well, that's how I really feel solving the listener crossword, I must say. Um, I worked on this one with my friend Lawrence. It was very fun, but uh, often feel like a moron in a way that in a way that the New York Times crossword could never even dream of making me feel. I mean, I do feel that way solving the Times, the New York Times sometimes, but it's nothing like the listener. Good Lord. Anyway, Eastern Lodging and oh, Emirat? Is that a lodging? I think of that as more of an architectural feature. There must be another meaning that, or maybe I'm, maybe I'm just sort of misremembering or miss. So let's see. Let's let's look at this. Deed I do informal assent. Oh, I was thinking of a minaret. Minaret is what I was thinking of. I think. Sorry, not imaret. So imaret must be a word that 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 has some. It, you know, mean mean a lodging or an inn or something like that. Okay, so that's that's fair enough. I just got that wrong in my memory. Anyway, so deed I do. Well, I'm not surprised at all that I didn't get this. That's informal assent. I don't think I've ever seen that written this way. You can imagine someone saying it slangily, but it's not something that I. Anyway, regulation followers for short. OTs overtimes. Oh, right. So I thought this was, I thought this was maybe what this is going to be, but I don't entirely understand why. Is it because regulation is used to indicate the sort of regulation length of a match? And so overtime follows that? I'm not quite sure, but yeah. Anyway, young male chicken. Is that a cockerel? And related to, oh, sorry, prepared to propose perhaps. N I was going to say knelt, but that doesn't fit. So kneeled maybe. And then who wrote the poetry of earth is never dead. It must be Keats. And a high school alter. Oh, all right. <laughs> so I could have gotten this much, much sooner, but I misread the clue. So we had the ACT, which is some kind of achievement test, some kind of standardized test. And then here in 18 down, we have high school alternatives, plural to the ACT. So the SATs, that's why it's the SAT, because we pluralize it for that extra letter. That was what I didn't see. Ah, I'm a moron. Okay. Rivals of the 1980s Showtime Lakers to fans. Well, I would never have known this myself, but I'm, is it the Celts maybe? The Celtics? I know that's a team, so maybe that's what it is. After Kipling, the youngest ever literature Nobelist. Interesting. 1957, 44 years old. Um, I don't know. I mean, I assume I'll recognize this person when I see it, but I don't know it offhand. Cuts down could be pairs down. And intended could be meant or could be your intended, your betrothed, maybe. It doesn't look likely in this case. Reverential. Let's keep going. So we haven't looked at anything beyond the sort of lower than the equator of this puzzle. Uh, one born in the wrong generation, maybe an old soul, perhaps. And expands. Right. We did. Oh, no, we did. We did look at this clue, actually. Works with 17 units. Don't know what that means. Let's check the crosses on Old Soul. You're such a tease. Could be O oh something. O oh stop it, maybe. Features of some glasses. Well, it could be um, eyeglasses, spectacles, or it could be glasses of water. Something else, I suppose. Um, Stems. You could have stemware. Wine glasses have stems. It ends after midnight in New York with the late show, maybe? I never remember which of those is which. They all have different, slightly different names, and I don't know what, <laughs> what any of them are, but the late show sounds like something that would end after midnight. Pepsi Max, e.g. Is that a diet soda? I'm sure it is. It must be. Oops. So what was this? Where Wonder Woman first worked, abbreviation. Oh, OSS. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, I wouldn't have known that, so I'm glad I got it with the crosses. So she worked for a military intelligence or special service, I guess. And then where to sit un cajon? On your head? 
head. head. This must be something for your. It must be some kind of hat related thing, or headwear of some sort. I actually don't know what this word means. I'm sorry, uh, but we can infer it goes on your head from the crosses in French. To offer to help. Offer to, uh, well, it could be to offer to help a verb, or it could be an offer to help, a noun. Uh, ask me, maybe. So it's neither of those really. It is, it is describing a verbal offer to help. Ask me. You could have a pin or something that says that if you are a customer service worker. Oh, works with 17 units or haikus. That's interesting. That's clever. So 17 units, in this case, meaning 17 syllables, because a haiku will have a line of five syllables followed by a line of seven, followed by a line of five. From, from what I know, that's sort of a reductive definition of a haiku, and it has been overly kind of simplified into a into an English speaking context. So, you know, not not claiming I'm giving any kind of precise definition of a haiku, but for the purpose of this clue, I think that's what it's getting at. All right. Oh, I see. If one is reverential, one is pious. And if one oh, I see. If one intended something, one aimed for it. And then ah, Camus, Albert Camus was apparently the youngest ever literature Nobelist at 44 years. That's interesting. Okay. Well, I believe that, I suppose. Let's see, what else can we, I guess we can, let's go down here where we have some, some more fill, some more um, crosses. Soak up the sun, say. Um, photosynthesis, photosynthesize, maybe? Plants, plants, when plants soak up, soak up the sun, they photosynthesize it. Oh, good, I'm pleased to get that, another long answer in there. Um, so ph photosynthesis, of course, is the is the process by which um, plants receive sunlight and convert it to the energy they need. So what about this? Main component of Britannium. Is it tin? Sort of guessing there. Yeah, I think so. Features of some accents, you could have twangs. In the U.S., the southern accent is often described as having a twang. What I might be in a lab. What I might be in a lab. I might be the chemical symbol for iodine. So how about that? Track, say, you could have a track on a record and it could be a song, for instance. Biblical figure with a large staff. Moses is often displayed that way. Depicted, I should say. Words of agreement. So do I, so am I, something like that. Don't know which, but it probably will have an I there. Name spelled with six dashes and six dots. Probably, I'm just, I, I mean, I, I don't know Morse code, but I'm guessing because we're describing the way that Morse code is illustrated with the dashes and dots, uh, I'm guessing this is referring to Morse, the inventor, presumably, of Morse code. Spot for archaeologists would be a dig site. Or spots, sorry, dig sites. I keep letting that uh, get the better of me, those pluralizations. I'll look out for that. What about this? Word with shop, shot, or shape. Um, oh, annoying. Why don't I see that? Uh, so this was so do I or so am I. So soda? No, no, sorry. That doesn't work. Money doesn't work. Doesn't fit. I don't know. That's very annoying. So this would be D or A. Well, A looks unlikely. So if it were D... Oh, body shop, body shot, or body shape. There we go. All right. So words of agreement are so do I. And Wade in the Baseball Hall of Fame, Wade Boggs, who I must admit I mainly know from a particular episode of It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, in which Wade Boggs is referenced. As an exception, it was a, a yeah, baseball player. Anyway, as an exception, um... For once, I see. Yes, okay. So you could say, oh, why wouldn't the Friday puzzle just be easy for once? Why wouldn't it just be easy as an exception? Multi-headed dog guarding the gates of the underworld in myth is Cerberus. There we go, in Greek myth. And what is this? This looks odd. Invoice info. Oh, hours. You could invoice for the number of hours you've worked. There we go. James Baldwin, e.g. Um, well, he was a writer. 
Oh, an essayist. There we go. Yes, okay. He did write essays. He wrote novels as well, but uh, wrote essays. And so here we have Blank Duets, 2007 country album. Um, I'm guessing this is going to be Reba, Reba McIntyre, who couldn't necessarily tell you any of her songs, but I, I do know she exists and is a country singer. So there we go. Gotcha could be right, maybe, but let's check the crosses first. No, it's not right because it's not correct, nor is it right because to walk in a leisurely way is to mosey, I think. And then air could be, you could have a mean, a sort of, mean, a sort of countenance and air about you, but uh, maybe I won't put that in until I have some crosses. Sushi variety. Nigiri, maybe, okay, so maybe it, maybe it is mean after all. And 2013 number one album from Kanye West. Uh, yeah, Yeezus. Sort of vaguely aware of that. And then Manhattan campus around Washington Square Park, NYU, New York University. And then civil disturbances, unrest, and gotcha is Roger. Okay, there we go. So um, sort of radio language. Roger, I copy that kind of thing. Like speeders often. They're often fined. And turn. Still don't see what this is. I wonder why I don't see that. Um, shade. So this could be shade as in shade from the sun or shade meaning a color or tinge. There we go. I was going to say it could also mean shade as in casting aspersions, that kind of thing. But um, nope. Came to a more appropriate synonym more quickly. So expands. Oh, dilutes maybe? If, if something's diluted, it, it expands in a way. And winter slopes activity. Okay, so it's not skiing. So it's right to be skeptical of that. So what is it? Winter slopes activity. I don't know. That's very annoying. This little, this little two by two square is full of mystery for me. So what's up, my dudes? Okay, so is it yo dog? What is this? Turn. It's not a go round. It doesn't fit, obviously. Um, turn. Historically Germanic observances. So I wanted to say Yules because I, there, are, I mean, there are Christmas traditions that are, do come from Germany specifically. I don't necessarily know. Uh, let's see. Winter slopes activity. Oh, tubing maybe? Go turn. Oh, go bad. Ah, so expands as dilates, which, <laughs> so dilutes and dilates are both cases in which I wouldn't consider them strict synonyms of expand, but I guess dilates is, a, but I, I figured dilutes worked because if you dilute a substance, it, you're sort of in, in, in increasing its total volume because you're, re you're reducing its density. Um, but I suppose expands is a, is a little, is a slightly closer match. You dilute your pupils, for instance, when the, when the um, ophthal ophthalmologist or whoever puts the, the drops in it and then you're they will expand. I mean, I suppose your pupils naturally um, dilate in some conditions anyway. But so anyway, so th for something to turn, it's to go bad. So that food has turned. It's gone bad. It's, it's going rotten. And then tubing is a winter slopes activity. And there we go. That is the Friday crossword. And I didn't think that was too bad for a Friday crossword, I must say. Um, it wasn't particularly brutal, although this area certainly gave me some trouble. It's so funny, this little, it really was this little square of crosses, this little two by two square. Uh, I mean, a little bigger than that earlier, but that was the final area that I found very challenging. And anything else that I found particularly difficult? I think the crosses were pretty helpful, generally speaking, so I didn't get stuck anywhere very often. The, the two big featured grid spanning answers, bare necessities and photosynthesize. I think I was pretty lucky that I spotted those right away. I don't know if that was because of the, I, I was lucky with respect to which crosses I happened to have first, or this one maybe was on my mind a bit, which is why I put it into the puzzle. But uh, yeah, photosynthesize as well. Soak up the sun, say it's a clever, it's a clever clue. Yeah. Let me know. Let me know how you did with those as well. Um, it was interesting hearing people's reactions to yesterday's puzzle. I'll, I'll share those, I guess, in the next segment, uh, which I guess I'll start right now. <laughs> so yes, let's discuss some clues from yesterday's puzzle. I actually don't think there were any corrections from yesterday's puzzle. So 
um, I suppose I'll just share. Well, no, there weren't any corrections, but there were some. There was some additional context. So let's let's look at that. So Kathleen Quinn, regarding Espo, the hockey player referenced in yesterday's puzzle, a Canadian by birth, Phil Esposito is a member of the Hockey Hall of Fame. He played 18 seasons in the NHL for the Chicago Blackhawks, Boston Bruins, and New York Rangers. When playing with Boston, Esposito became the greatest scorer of his day. Uh, he became the first NHL player to score 100 points in a season, far eclipsing the century mark with the record 126. Well done, Espo. And Rick Di Natale, regarding the Datsun Z, the car, the car model that was referenced in yesterday's puzzle, which I also um, spoke a bit about, the Datsun Z car started in 1969 as the Fair Lady Z in Japan and the 240Z in the U.S., Later models had increasingly higher displacement engines, 260Z, 280Z, etc. Uh, at some point, Nissan decided to drop the Datsun brand in favor of the parent brand name. So Datsun is to Nissan as Chevy is to General Motors. That's good, good to know. The original was a two-seat sports car with a price similar to the MG of the day, albeit with a powerful motor and Ferrari-like styling. The fancy electronics came later. That was what I mentioned, the sort of talking, talking bits. For a while, I had the answer to this clue as... BBC, a completely different interpretation of Z-Car. Oh, that's funny. And regarding other automobiles, Jamaican Skeleton explains, Alfa Romeo did leave the U.S. market in 1995 before resuming sales in 2008. Okay, I don't think I realized that Alfa Romeo had uh, re-entered the U.S. market. I think I thought it maybe did, but I wasn't sure. Poor sales volume is usually attributed to increased competition by other European competitors and a reliable for having horrendous uh, reliability and a reputation for having horrendous reliability. Personally, I love alphas, but would need gobs of money to justify buying one. Um, yeah, fair enough. That's the sort of thing people say about, about many sporty cars, I guess. And I do think that was all I had for... Oh, right. There were, there were also just a number of people who commented on the... Uh, the theme from yesterday's puzzle and how they broke into it. And it was, what is interesting is that it seems as though most, at least most people who commented, um, had the same break in I did. It was with the Nessun Dorma clue, which I think makes sense because seeing that Pacini aria in three letters just didn't, it just didn't make any sense. And, um, so sometimes I think those proper nouns can be helpful when you're breaking into that kind of theme. Whereas generic words, you might just think, well, there's probably just a short generic word for this and I just can't bring it to mind. So I'm not going to think think too much that anything's amiss. Uh, so yeah, quite several several people had that same had that same break in. So that was interesting to th see. Thanks to everybody who commented on it. And that, I suppose, is that for today's puzzle, for the Friday puzzle. I hope you enjoyed it. I will be back, of course, tomorrow for the Saturday puzzle, another themeless puzzle, and very possibly the trickiest puzzle. Well, maybe not the trickiest puzzle of the week, but maybe the most straightforwardly challenging puzzle of the week on Saturday. We'll have to see. I hope you join me. But until that point, please do have an excellent remainder of your Friday. Take care.